The defense headquarters said its air component of Operation Hadin Kai has eliminated three top commanders of the Islamic States of West Africa province terrorists in Barnu. The director, Defense Media Operations, Major General Edward Buba, disclosed this at the weekly report of the operations of the armed forces on Friday in Abuja. Buba said the three commanders identified as Abu Maimuna, Abu Zahra and Commander Saleh with their lieutenants in a canoe were targeted and destroyed by the airstrikes. He said troops had, during the week in other operations, neutralized 43 terrorists, apprehended 76 others and rescued 27 kidnapped hostages. He added that the troops recovered 81 weapons, 2,150 assorted ammunition and the sum of 1.2 million naira, amongst other items. In the South South region, Buba said the troops of Operation Delta Safe apprehended 29 perpetrators of oil theft and denied oil thieves the estimated sum of 131.1 million naira during the week. He said the troops discovered and destroyed seven dugout pits, 13 boats, 23-story tanks, two barges, four vehicles, 15 cooking ovens, two pump machines, and 16, Ill 16 illegal refining sites. According to him, troops recovered 139,045 litres of stolen crude oil, 25,115 litres of illegally refined AGO and 5,200 litres of DPK. As security concerns continue to rise in Nigeria's capital city, Abuja, the Minister of the Federal Capital Territory, Nyeson Wike, has declared his commitment to demolish abandoned buildings in Gwagwalda Area Council in an effort to stem the tide of rising security challenges. Trustee Viz Habibat Ajayi reports. The town hall series by the FCT minister is aimed at fostering interaction and participation in governance process to bridge the gap between the people and the government. This time, the FCT minister Yesam Wiki is meeting with stakeholders in Guagualada area Kansu that include community leaders and heads of security agencies. Among the concerns raised by Guagualada residents were the inadequate policing facility and the absence of a general hospital, prompting an immediate call for intervention. Council, we have only two police divisions in Guagualada Council. We have the division in Zupa, we have the division in Guagualada area Council, Guagualada here. I don't know if you write to you, and I know if you write to you, at least order the Commissioner of Police to give us more police division in order for them to at least do a very wonderful work for us. Uh, one, the hospital, I mean, one Nigeria, anyone that's a teaching hospital, the most two, they will learn because of the emergency. Here we just have one single day. <laughs> Number two, the whole area council, one six area council, all the five area council, they have to. Uh, General Hospital. Who here in Guadalupe will be here because the project is a bundle project. Acknowledging the magnitude of security challenges in the nation's capital, gives some wicked place to make the FCT unsafe for criminal elements. The police are not able to manage all of them. They are not in the power. They are plenty motor. Plenty. As we speak about, in front next week, every police station went there for the six area council for this one of more vehicles. We also need to have all our communication gadgets in the land. Our budget is here, I will put that. I will come here. Two, the 
Sometimes we say this one when they have been in Paris, I don't so. Yeah. But you know, say, let the property be come out to You know, say, if it's about to be a large enough, and I just stop, and I do support us, those stops will come out to you. And I don't agree? Yeah. Okay. Nigeria's capital has been inundated with security issues recently following weeks of kidnappings that have put residents on the edge. EK is urging stakeholders to remain vigilant and actively contribute to addressing the prevailing insecurity in the health city. Habib Atajai, Trust TV News, Abuja. More on security matters. Some suspects have been arrested in connection with the beheading of a young lady in a hotel in Yola, the Adamawa state capital. The spokesman of the police command, Suleiman Ngoroje, said on Friday that three employees of the hotel, identified as Jacob and Yifarta, who are receptionists, and Isa, a security guard, were arrested. According to the police, the handset that belonged to the deceased and the drug used to sedate her were recovered from the crime scene. The main suspect had on January 18, 2024, at about 9.30 p.m., taken his victim to a hotel where he was lodged as a guest, beheaded her, and went away with her decapitated head. The spokesman assured the public of the determination of the Commissioner of Police, Afolabi Babatola, to arrest the perpetrator of the crime. Meanwhile, the Supreme Court's reaffirmation of Abdullahi Suley as governor of Nasarawa State has triggered jubilation and protests among residents in Lafia. Correspondent Abubakar Abdullahi reports that the streets of Lafia, the state capital, and various parts of the state were filled with mixed reactions over the outcome of the Supreme Court's decision on the Nasarawa State governorship election. His report is presented from our studio. The battle for the number one seat in Nasara State is finally over as the Supreme Court affirms the victory of Governor Abdullah Isule as substantive winner of the election. The PDP candidate Umbugadu has filed a petition challenging the decision of INEC. Reacting to the development, residents of the state eager for the outcome expressed their joy believing that the judgment will encourage and empower the current administration to serve the state better. The judgment of today at the Supreme Court is enough for every citizen in Nasara State to come back to Sule. Because it has been affirmed by the Supreme Court that he is the sensitive executive governor of Nasara State. So I'm calling on opposition in the state and everywhere they are in the country to please put their sword back into their shelves. I am calling on opposition people to come and join her with His Excellency and move Nasarawa's forward. That's my time at Dubai. Maga Jimmy Jinyawa, a Kanyewood actor and special assistant on culture and tourism to Nasarawa State Governor, described the Supreme Court victory as a triumph for the entire state. He urged the opposition to have faith and accept the Supreme Court's judgment. The opposition should take it uh, uh, as a game. There must be a vic uh, victor and there must be a vanquish. But they should take it in faith that this thing has come and it has, and it has passed and they should wait for their own turn. However, in apparent dissatisfaction with the Supreme Court's judgment, some members of the opposition People's Democratic Party staged a protest in front of the state party secretariat along Joss Road in Lafayette. Despite this, Trust TV observed that residents continued their normal activities without hindrance, with security personnel deployed strategically across the state. Consequently, the Nasarawa State Police Command has apprehended 38 suspected miscreants for public disturbance. Trust TV News previously reported that the protests resulted in the complete blockage of Lafia Joss Road as demonstrators set fire to tires, obstructing travelers and other road users. Motorists had to... Motorists had to seek alternative routes to exit Lafia, the natural state capital, 
Additionally, shops and schools in Lafayette metropolis were abruptly closed during the protest. Immediately after the Supreme Court judgment on the governorship dispute in the state, some miscreants assembled themselves at the PDP Secretariat and they subsequently blocked the highway, harassing motorists and passers by. So we had to mobilize and slow them. We arrested 38 suspects and we recovered 29 of the motorcycles. Uh, the matter is being investigated at the state side. Well, those suspects arrested have been giving us useful information that will allow us to get to the sponsors. When we get to the sponsors, they will also face the rats of the road. We move over now to the south-south part of the country. In Delta State, particularly within the People's Democratic Party camp, there is widespread jubilation following the Supreme Court's confirmation of Governor Sharif Oberowari's victory in the March 18, 2023 gubernatorial election. The ecstatic mood reflects the resonance of the Supreme Court's verdict with the expressed will, aspirations and choices of the people during the election. Jonathan Anwanyai tells us more. It's celebration time for members of the People's Democratic Party in Delta State. Following the confirmation of Governor Sheriff Oberewori by the Supreme Court, the dismissal of the appeal filed by the All Progressives Congress candidate and former Deputy Senate President Ovie Omagege marked a decisive moment for the PDP. The Supreme Court ruled that the APC candidate failed to substantiate his case against the Governor. Responding to the Supreme Court's judgment, Individuals interviewed by Trust TV express relief that the electoral litigation's challenges are finally over. Supreme Court uh, case has come and gone, and my governor, uh, governor, very comfortable as well. And we, the British family, were very happy to see. So I'm using this opportunity to beg other parties to come and join the British family in Delta State. Governor Sheriff that will unite uh, Delta State. And I want to tell them that Ukoro will reach everybody. I have Ukoro has reached me and is going to reach everybody. So let them come. Let us put our hands together and make Delta State great to see. The mood here is everybody is excited to receive our governor and also for the victory that comes around the city. I also want to thank other chairmen and other parties. They should come. Pretty be at the best. Thank you to the Supreme Court for validating the, uh, the, the, the victory of the governor, right honorable Sheriff Oboru. I want to say a very big thank you to the Supreme Court for affirming the victory of the governor. However, off camera, some members of the All Progressive Congress expressed their support for Senator Ovie Omagege, the APC governorship candidate, and considered the Supreme Court decision a temporary setback based on principles. Jonathan Awai, Trust TV News, Asaba. This is a news update on Trust TV coming up after the break. We'll bring you insights on how 17th century designs still thrive despite modern encroachment and competition. We'll be right back. Don't go away. We started manufacturing leather since 1958. But the most important thing is that if the system is checked correctly, we won't, we won't have where we are now. If somebody has depression, they may just be very irritable and unproductive in the office. So you find on average already, about one in four, one in five Nigerians already have a mental illness, a mental health condition that needs some form of attention. Uh, no matter how good an economy is, if the federal government goes past, believe me, everything in the economy is just a matter of time, it will go past. Uh, so first of all, about uh, maybe slightly above 
below 70% is in federal government securities. If government has uh, banned importation of fertilizer and states are doing it at the level of governance, but I believe that production and distribution of fertilizer should be left to the private sector. Uh, this is the general multipurpose card and it has a chip here. So this chip is about 80 kilobytes. The one that you get from the bank for eight years is just four kilobytes. So this is like 20, 20 times. Welcome back and thank you for staying. If you're just joining us, this is a news update on Trust TV. Let's take a look at a recap of some of our top stories. We told you that troops neutralized three top ISWAP commanders, 43 terrorists in Borno. Police arrest three in connection to hotel murder in Adamawa. And now to other stories. In a significant move, the Sokoto state government has successfully recovered 70 vehicles reportedly in the possession of former government officials in the state. Jelani Kaugo, the chairman of the Committee for the Review of Wasteful and Unnecessary Government Assets, disclosed this development while presenting the interim report of the committee to Governor Ahmed Aliyu on Thursday. Abu Bakar Imam has details of the story. According to the chairman, the committee identified a total of 745 vehicles. Out of this number, 302 vehicles were found in the possession of former commissioners, special advisors, and chief executives of ministries, departments, and agencies, while 443 were under the control of local government areas. Jelani reported that 32 vehicles have been successfully retrieved from former government officials. Notably, the committee discovered that 70% of the 443 vehicles allocated to the 23 local government areas had been grounded. Jelani further stated that about 40 heavy-duty vehicles under the possession of the council areas were hired out to private individuals, with some of them taken to other states and Niger Republic. The vehicles include six graders, six payloaders, three rollers, nine tippers, four water tankers, and two fire service tankers, among others, but that, that five of them were so far recovered. And, uh... About 32 of them. About 32 of them. 30, 30, 39 are here. One of them is on the way to be retrieved or to be by the Commissioner of uh, Budget and City and the uh, body. Responding to the developments, Governor Aliyu thanked the committee for a diligent work and assured them that the government will thoroughly study their reports and take the necessary actions. From Sokoto, Abu Bakar Awal Imam reporting for Trust TV. Leatherworks designs, which are an intrinsic part of interior decorations in northern Nigeria, are said to have been derived from the Ottoman Empire. Despite dating back decades to the 17th century, these designs are still, still have a market a market and is being appreciated by many despite newer and fancier versions brought about by technological advancement. Adomusa visited Naragota Leatherworks in Jos, the Plateau State capital, to report on how their value has appreciated over the years. This is Naragota Leatherworks, established in 1935 and located in Naragota community of Jos, local government area of the state. Here, different leather items such as wallets, handbags, carpet among others are produced mostly from animal skin. Despite modern designs of similar products produced by Naraguta Leather Works, the institution is still not overtaken by modernity as people are still patronizing the product produced by the institution. Sure, you know, you know, people, as you said, you know, it's something that has to, that rather, they go, that goes along with culture. And whosoever wants to live right, rather show that uh, 
he loves culture, definitely he will have to come along with us. Rather, he has to come to, uh, to us to produce some particular things for him. Just like the way we make, uh, we produce the leather poofs that are stuffed and kept in the palo. Most of them at times come along with their carpets that you spread on the floor. Or some of them even use them as decorate the decorations on the walls. So all those things are a kind of... Um, you know things that are done culturally, and uh, you know all those tons, all those ones are things that are we even we use our hands. We don't need machineries for all that. You have to sit down, cut out the patterns into pieces, then put them together to give you a particular size of uh, uh, carpet or the poof that you want. Okay. The director said the institution is considering applying technology into the craft to enable it adapt to the current trends. We are even hoping to uh, import more machineries that will even aid us starting from the tannery to the finished uh, product. And I'm sure we all know what a tannery is. You know, a tannery is where the skins are brought to and turned into, in fact, they undergo different processes and they, turn, they are turned into a useful leather. So that's uh, what the tannery is. So we are hoping by the uh, special grace of God, from the tannery up to the uh, finished uh, product, we are going to get machineries for all that. Some just residents explain why they patronize leather items. I've been patronizing these products, leather works, for the past 20 years. It's durable, flexible, and I've been benefiting from it. I use it and I sell it. Most times, customers see sit on my legs and they patronize and come to my house whoever that sees it and ask where I buy I told them I bought from Naraguta leather works I prefer leather works material or items such as bag shoes and other items because of the quality especially especially the one produced locally here in Nigeria like my bag here I bought it for more than three years. I have been using it all the time. But still, the bag is looking good. Unlike the foreign ones that I will buy at high cost. Like this bag, you can buy it like maybe five to 6,000 here in Nigeria or in, in Plateau State. Let me cite example with where I base. 6,000 Naira. But still, you can use it for more than five years. The director said the leather works business though challenging in some aspects is still profitable especially if customers are available adon musa trust tv news joss in business the central bank of nigeria says its monetary policy committee will hold its first meeting under the tenure of olayemi kadoso as governor on Monday, February 26, and Tuesday, February 27, 2024. The announcement follows a two-day strategic session for members of the Monetary Policy Committee in preparation for the meeting in February. Confirming this in Abuja on Friday, the Acting Director, Corporate Communications Department of the CBN, Hakama C.D. Ali, disclosed that the session is aimed at brainstorming and engaging in an in-depth discussion about the committee's objectives. She revealed that the critical focus areas during the retreat included deliberations on the strategic plan to effect necessary improvements in the monetary policy transmission mechanism. Meanwhile, a calendar of meetings of the Monetary Policy Committee for 2024 published on the CBN website indicates that the meetings have been scheduled for February, March, May, July, September, and November 2024. Away from Nigeria, African leaders have condemned Israel's military campaign in Gaza, urging an immediate end to the ongoing conflict that disproportionately affects civilians. The leaders made their stand known during a conference in Uganda hosted by the Non-Aligned Movement, a coalition of 120 states that do not align formally with any major power bloc. The President of the United Nations General Assembly, Denise Francis, expressed deep concern and dismay 
over the continuing calamity in the Gaza Strip. In a strong statement, he implored the NAM to leverage its influence to bring a halt to the devastating violence, questioning how much more suffering the region could endure. Uganda's president, Yoweri Museveni, who is also set to assume the chairmanship of the NAM, echoed these sentiments. He emphasized the importance of prioritizing the freedom of the people, condemning what he described as the shallowness of some global actors' philosophical, ideological, and strategic perspectives. In sports, defending champions Senegal became the second qualifiers for the Africa Cup of Nations round of 16 as Ismail Sar. Habib Diallo and Sadiq Main scored in a 3-1 win over Cameroon on Friday. A few hours earlier, Cape Verde were the first country to secure a last 16 place by hammering Mozambique 3-0 in Abidjan. Sar netted in the, in the first half while Diallo and Main in the second in Yamoskro to give the title holders a maximum of six points after two groups. C marches. The losers have only won. Jean Charles Castelletto scored late in the second half to have to have to deficit to 2 1, but Senegal were not to be denied a convincing victory and Maine put the outcome beyond doubt. Senegal kicked off the five of the team that started the 2022 final against Egypt in Yuande which they won in a penalty shootout, with Maine scoring the decisive spot kick. Cameroon had to do without star forward Vincent Abubakar again, as he had not recovered from a thigh injury that ruled him out of a draw with Guinea four days ago. With that, we've come to the end of the news update at this hour. But remember, you can always follow us across all of our social media platforms and also join our YouTube live stream for more news, programs and documentary. I'm Aisha Salihu. Thanks for your time.